become centered and open our hearts to the Spirit um, in whatever form it would come to us today. Let us read the response of the blessing of the light in your order of worship. In Christ was life, and the life was the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome. Let us pray for peace and the things that make for peace as we light the peace candle. the United Church of Stratford on this uh, second Sunday of Easter. Welcome to those of you in the sanctuary and welcome to those online. Uh, we acknowledge that we are on the ancestral and unceded land of the traditional caretakers here, the Western Abenaki or Wabanaki people. Our, our congregation has voted to establish a reparations fund uh, for the hardships that they have had to endure from colonial times unto this day. And we give thanks for the opportunity to share in the bounty of this place and to protect it in the spirit of indigenous wisdom. The first Christians uh, were Jews and they worshiped on Saturday, but they extended worship into Sunday because Easter happened on a Sunday. Uh, so every week we are celebrating the power of resurrection at work in the world. That's why we meet on Sundays. Um, we're just more conscious of it during Easter season. Uh, we are more intentional in our uh, joyous celebration of a spirit that uh, raises new life from the dead. Uh, and, um, and also aware of a God who is unconditionally forgiving and gives infinite second chances. Uh, a Christ whose love is a light that shines in the darkness um, that the darkness cannot overcome. 
we can celebrate that, that love and life and light today by filling with it uh, and then shining it with joy to those around us after worship and then uh, carrying it out into the world uh, around us. The power of resurrection uh, means that we can be free from whatever holds us back from fullness of life, uh, including shyness. Uh, so please linger after the service to extend yourself, especially to those you do not know or those you do not know well. Uh, please see the uh, announcements in the bulletin. Um, if you are online, uh, you can find the bulletin in the menu at the top of the welcome page of our website. Um, for those in the sanctuary, please stay for refreshments and the pleasure of neighborliness in the uh, parish hall. And for those of you on Zoom, uh, please say hello to one another after the service, and I will get on the laptop as quickly as I can uh, to visit with you. Uh, please note that uh, Rod Small will be giving a talk here on Tuesday evening. Um, see the bulletin uh, for, for details on that. Um, and other announcements? Yes, Christina. What? Just a question. Will that also be available by the Zoom? Yes, uh, yes. The, um, that will be available to uh, live stream on Zoom, and we will be making a recording of it and making that available as well. So, um, yeah, did it. Thank you. Good morning. Just a reminder that in response to the very sweet and loving letter from Carmen and Emmett Worm, we are continuing our collection for World Central Kitchen at their request. Um, they, World, World Central Kitchen is working today very hard in Turkey to feed earthquake victims. Um, you're welcome. There's a basket in the back on the table that's marked for World Central Kitchen, and we're taking donations of checks or cash, checks made out to World Central Kitchen through April 30th. Thank you so much. Thank you, Danette. Jim. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to announce officially that we have completed the sale of the parsonage. Just to remind you that, um, <laughs> thank you. On September 18th, we had a very strong vote. Um, I think the one vote, it would have been unanimous, but one person voted saying, have all other alternatives been explored? And we felt, though, that we had a hearty support from the congregation. And it was a challenging process, and it really helped to have had that kind of agreement at the beginning. So the, the closing was a week ago, two weeks ago this coming Wednesday, so the week before last. And um, the buyer is an adult child of a Stratford family, which is a nice kind of completion of that process. And I just want to personally thank um, working with Bob and Glenn, I would say was the best part of this process. <laughs> and their kind of eyes on the prize and practical uh, problem solving approach really was extremely helpful. And also the council, there were points at which we had to take stock and make a decision how to go forward. And um, so the council invisibly, as always, has done a lot of work to complete this process. And after church, if you have specific questions um, for any of us, that would be great. Could you tell us how much it sold for? Pardon me? How much it sold for? No, I'm not going to announce that. <laughs> <laughs> that that's, you can ask that afterwards, I guess. Yes, Bob. One more. <laughs> and just to add, to Jim's comments, um, there were a couple of important objectives that we had when we went into this, and um, one was uh, to try and ensure that Doug and Jesse, who were our tenants, ended up in the new home in Stratford, and that turned out to be true. They were able to find a new place to rent, so that was really great. And that we find somebody, preferably from Stratford, a Stratford family who could use the parsonage, so that was awesome that we were able to do that too. But uh, beyond um, uh, Jim, Glenn, and I, there was a lot of help too. Amber <laughs> came for a very long cleaning session. And uh, I know Becky, I think, was, was helpful in some of that. And Jane, of course, uh, so helpful in managing the money that we needed to transact for getting the place cleaned up. So 
it was an all hands on deck effort and just a lot of thanks to, to everybody who participated. Thank you, yes, Clint. Between the three of us, we'll hit all points. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess one thing that, that the community was kind of interested to know is that whether there would continue to be an apartment there. And I think the new owner is, is planning to continue that to be an apartment, so that's, that's good because there's not that much housing in, in the village. Um, and then, yeah, I also just um, wanted to, to give Jim his props because, you know, the things had to happen at the last minute, you know, like with any sort of closing, unforeseen things came up, including the furnace failing a couple times and having to get snow off the roof. And so, it, you know, Jim and Becky were there, um, you know, going, going really above and beyond. So, um, yeah, thanks, Jim. Yeah, it, it, this really is, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a great thing to announce on an Easter Sunday because there is so much to, to celebrate. Um, it's also just a, a historic moment in the life of the church. Um, so I wanted to also take this opportunity to, you know, to honor, honor it, honor the passing of the parsonage into the, into the care of others. Um, for all of us to express our gratitude um, to, to uh, Jim and, and Bob and Glenn and, um, and all those who worked, you know, really long hours and months uh, to accomplish this. Um, also to honor and remember all those before them who cared for this building um, in their own uh, way and, um, uh, and to celebrate that uh, all that it was to this church for generations, I mean, going back not only the life of our United Church, but for the Baptist Church going back you know, hundreds of years, um, all the pastors who lived in it, um, uh, all the church activities and classes that took place in it. So I wanted to just kind of open this up for a minute and just if you have any memories, if there are any, you know, if there's anything or any appreciations or anything you want to share. Um, does anybody want to add to this celebration? <laughs> it was a wonderful place to land when we moved to Stratford and to live in town. Um, for my daughters who had <clears throat> only lived in the woods of Thetford, it was a yeah, it was a lovely place to land, and I appreciate that it took a lot of work to keep it um, going. And it was such a joy yesterday to drive through the village and see a, a, a spring wreath on the door. I just, it made me want to sing. So, thank you. This is just a piece of history, and maybe people know more, and maybe everyone knows this, but um, during this process, Several times I was asked, why is this church's parsonage in the other village? And the reason was, what is now the gym was the Baptist church. And when the Baptists and the Congregationalists merged to become the United Church, the parsonage was a sort of bridge between the villages for the, the new church um, that was formed out of the, the two prior churches. So that's a long tradition. And the Door, above the door, it says 1830 on the Parsonage building, but Bob Johnston said he thinks 1815. And Tom told me this, but they made a map in 1830, and everything that was there at that point, they called 1830. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, the ministry, a lot of ministry happened there. I mean, I remember, I remember um, boy, uh, I guess it was maybe Mary or Regina um, going to... Um, uh, a uh, confirmation class at the kitchen table there. Um, uh, I mean, I wasn't, it wasn't my confirmation class. I was, I think I was in training for ministry at that time, and, um, just helping out. But um, yeah, just lots of things happened there. So any other memories or anybody you want to lift up or anything? All right, well, thank you. Any other announcements? Um, well, uh, today is the second Sunday of Easter. Um, but you could also call it a Little Pentecost. Um, some people do call it Little Pentecost. Uh, we're, we will be hearing the, the story of Easter night in the Gospel of John 
um, which really is uh, John's version of, of Pentecost, um, because Jesus breathes the spirit into the disciples and uh, frees them from all that holds them back. Jesus sent them out to be the first church, uh, doing his work in the world, and, um, and we are a continuation of that story. I mean, the story is still going on, and, and we are here. Um, so the, the real significance of Easter is the creation of a community with the peace uh, and love of Christ at its core that serves as an outpost of the realm of God on earth. Um, God's realm being uh, where the force of life overcomes the force of death, where reconciliation and forgiveness triumph over strife, where compassion and, and loving kindness make a unity of our diversity, uh, where inclusion and oneness are extended to all. Um, so let us worship together in the joy that we can be that kind of inspired and beloved community. Our reader is Christina Robinson. The responsive reading is in the bulletin. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. You are my God. I have no good apart from you. Holy ones can still be found in the Those who bow down before the false gods of selfishness, greed, and ambition create suffering and sorrow in this world. They sacrifice the blood of the earth to their own gain. The boundary lines fall in pleasant places for me a goodly heritage in you and in all that is holy. You give me counsel, O God, and I thank you. In the night, my heart recites unto you. I keep you always before me, because you are at my right hand. I shall not be moved.
now we come to our children's time, and um, this is uh, for the children of in all of us. Um, so good morning. Um, so uh, every year on the Sunday after Easter, we read the story of Easter night uh, before the disciples were really convinced that Jesus was alive again. Uh, they were confused and they were scared that the people who killed Jesus would come and arrest them. So they had locked themselves in a house where they were hiding, a safe house. Uh, they were locked uh, in a prison of their own making, in a way, um, a prison cell of fear. And the miracle that we celebrate uh, this Sunday is of Jesus freeing them and sending them out into the world full of the Spirit with this huge release of energy and powerful love uh, that is still going on today. So every Easter, that release makes me think of Nelson Mandela uh, from South Africa. Uh, Mandela spent 27 years of his life in prison because he saw that things were very wrong in his country and he tried to fix them. People with white skin did not allow people of other color skin to use the same public bathrooms or schools or lots of other things. Um, white people forced all the other people to live in poverty and treated them like slaves, even though it was not the white people's country. Uh, they stole it from the black people. Mandela, uh, Nelson Mandela saw that this was not fair and he wanted to do things to make it so that all would have a chance of having enough to live a decent life and, and all would have an equal democratic say in things. Mandela fought hard for that and the white people sent him to prison for it. But here is what made Mandela truly great. He suffered 27 years in prison. He got angry, he was hurt, he was very sad, but the spirit of love and light somehow came through that locked door and freed and inspired his heart. So when he finally did get out of prison, he was able to be kind and forgive the people who had put him there. He was able to help black people and white people who hated one another learn how to live together. He became president and created a nation where all had equal rights and at least a chance to live comfortable lives. That is the kind of love that Jesus taught us to have, that forgives and that seeks peace and well-being for all. And here in church, we are trying to do that. We're trying to be like Nelson Mandela. And one of the things that helps us is, you'll never guess, but to pray. <laughs> Uh, because prayer helps us find love and light and courage. Whenever we feel locked up uh, and alone and hurting, and it helps us walk out of our cell into freedom and joy. So let us pray together now the, uh, the new version of the Lord's Prayer that you'll find printed on the uh, pew card um, or on the screen share. Let us pray. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, Way, Truth, and Life, Force of love and light flowing within and all around us, may your realm of compassion, justice, and peace rule our world. Thank you for nurturing and guiding us, forgiving us and helping us forgive, and leading us away from harmful desires. Please save us from all forms of evil, for you are our source, our home, our power, all goodness and beauty forever.
the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Thus ends the reading. It was Easter night. The room was crowded and hot. The windows were shuttered, the door bolted. Oil lamps flickered and their smoke mingled with the scent of anxious sweat. Some people were quietly weeping. Some sat in silence, a look of devastation on their faces. People spoke in the shadowed corners in low, urgent tones, arguing or looking wildly hopeful and nodding insistently. Their wise and holy teacher, a powerful but gentle and loving man, had been publicly humiliated, tortured, and executed just a few days before. All of the men in the room, all of the men in the room, had deserted him when he was arrested. Their spokesman had denied him three times, and their treasurer had betrayed him. Now, a leading woman claimed to have seen their teacher alive, and two leading men had confirmed her story of an empty tomb. But what did it mean? They were expecting a terrifying pound on the door, afraid that the authorities would discover their safe house and arrest, torture, and execute them, too. If one of their most trusted leaders could betray their teacher, then anyone might betray the rest of them. They kept glancing nervously in the direction of the door, and yet no one had seen it open when suddenly Jesus was standing among them. Imagine the explosion of emotions, terror that they were seeing a ghost, doubt that they could believe their eyes, shock at the impossibility of him rising from the dead or someone alive coming through a locked door. But he said, peace be with you. They were incapable of peace, <laughs> um, but he showed them where the nails had punctured his hands and where the spear had pierced his side. And only then were they able to let go of doubt and feel exultant joy. Jesus repeated, peace, peace be with you. And they began to understand that he was indeed the Messiah, 
but not the kind that they expected. Jesus was there for liberation, lifting people out of inner and outer oppression, but not by overthrowing the government by with an armed rebellion. He was there to free them from their fear, to free them from the path of violence, to free them and send them out into the world to do what he had done in the way that he had done it. He sent them to lead others to healing and peace and to recruit others to join the struggle to establish God's realm on earth. A human society ruled by compassion, love, and justice for all. He formed them into the first church, breathing the Holy Spirit into them. And he empowered them to organize themselves, using forgiveness as a tool for holding the community together. Jesus came through the locked door and it changed everything from the inside out. He didn't change the outside world first. He didn't make it safe to unlock the door. He came into the place where they were guarded, where they had retreated, and he changed things inside that innermost room. The authorities were still after them, but they unlocked the door and went out because now they were at peace with whatever would come. They had a joy and a love and a mission now that they were bursting to share. The Holy Spirit was alive in them. Resurrection power was alive in them as a force of nature. And they were no longer stopped by the threat of pain or failure or even death. The good news is that Jesus is still coming through whatever is blocking us from experiencing God's peace and joy and love. Jesus comes through doors locked by conflict, by guilt, by doubt, by grief, by fear, by rage. He comes through the scars of old wounds. He comes into our prisons of addiction or compulsion. Christ comes and says, peace, peace be with you, and then sends us back out through those doors with new gifts to share. I imagine that many of us could bear witness to this. Um, many of us have experienced it ourselves or have seen someone become miraculously resurrected to live anew. Therapists, 12-step uh, groups, grief support groups, and of course churches exist to help liberate people who are locked in oppressive rooms. And it can happen, we have to hope, we have to believe, and we know, it can happen to whole nations. Bishop Desmond Tutu's book, No Future Without Forgiveness, describes how South Africa emerged from the locked prison cell of apartheid. A change that began inside people enabled them to change them their behavior, to forgive, and to heal and to be reconciled. The transformation took a long time, the better part of a century, and it evolved much hateful violence and suffering. But they got there. And Nelson Mandela led and embodied that change. Um, he did not always feel peace in prison. Uh, he struggled. He came close to despair, as you can imagine. But he grew through suffering to a deeper spiritual state and a higher developmental level. In the end, at age 73, he was able to forgive and embrace as one the people who oppressed his nation and robbed him of 27 years of his life. He was their prisoner, but he was free. He suffered their violence, but he had a core of peace that they could not reach. Saint Seraphim of Seraph said, have peace in yourself and thousands will find salvation around you. Mandela's inner freedom and peace 
saved millions of blacks and whites. So imagine a church filled with that power. Imagine what it could do to change the world around it. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference, led by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., was a collection of churches and pastors and lay people whose inner liberation from hatred and violence led to the legal door-opening liberation gained by the nonviolent civil rights movement. Transformation and resurrection are always approaching. The spirit that created life on earth needs humanity to evolve and undergo a revolution of values, as King called it, uh, or a spiritual awakening to a new consciousness, as Gus Speth has called it. We need to progress to a new developmental level, as many psychologists have called it. We are waiting for the spirit to come through the locked door, as it has countless times before, to transform us so that we may go out and help it transform the world. We each have unique gifts that the Spirit's movement to transform the world needs. We have a role to play as individuals and as a church. So let us pray in silence, inviting the Spirit through the door of our heart and expressing our willingness to be called and to be sent. Let us pray. Amen. things that um, uh, that moves me in, 
this passage that we read today is that is Jesus talking about forgiveness um, and just uh, you know being aware that uh, being able to I mean I love Bishop Tutu's Archbishop Tutu's title of that book no future without forgiveness uh, and I think about um, I think about this as a as a kind of guiding principle of uh, or organizing um, the church. Um, I don't know about other organizations, um, but the church is supposed to have forgiveness right at the core of its organizing principles. And, uh, and so often, I mean, you know, I look out at these pews and I, I think of all the people who have left because they were unable to forgive. Um, because we inevitably, you know, we're human and you know, whether you're a pastor or a layperson, you know, you, you say things, you do things, you make mistakes, we, we, you know, we differ, we have rough edges, and we have to forgive, um, and forgive, and forgive, and forgive. And the art of forgiveness, uh, you know, it's not a simple art, um, but, but somehow to be able to be skilled in the, the practical, Organizing art of forgiveness um, is uh, you know, something to remember. You know, I, I, you know, maybe we'll. There, there are some great books on this, um, including the Sunflower, and I, maybe someday we'll we'll go more deeply into that. But uh, I remember it this week. So, so let us um, join together in a in a spirit of of prayer. Join our hearts and minds together. Holy God, we are aware of um, people who are in pain today, people who have lost uh, their loved ones. We ourselves are in pain at the loss of people who are dear to us. And we are inevitably in pain as we read the news and look at what is happening in the world. Um, and we acknowledge and validate our pain, our grief, our anger, all the emotions that, that are stirring in us as we look at a world where death, where meanness, where oppression, censorship, you know, these things happen and are happening. So we, we come on this second Sunday of Easter, this day of tremendous joy and liberation and, and uh, affirmation. We come asking that you help us believe in the power of that spirit of resurrection, that spirit of new life, the spirit of love triumphing over everything. And we thank you so much for all the evidence that we have of that. All the people who have come through, come out of the, the locked door of addiction. Um, uh, the nations that have risen, however briefly, into moments of, of pure beauty and, and you know, democracy and freedom and reversing and, and repairing what they have done wrong, truth and reconciliation. We thank you so much for the individuals around us who have gone through terrible, uh, lonely, dark rooms um, and come out into the light and taught us how and, and showed us the way. And we thank you so much for this church where we, some of us are down and some of us are up. And some of us are in those, those locked rooms and some of us are, have just come through the door and are able to say, yeah, you, you will get out. <laughs> Trust, love, let go. So help us to take all this that we have gained today 
uh, into, uh, into this world uh, that is not in church on a Sunday morning, that doesn't know the love and joy that we have experienced of this community. Um, help us to carry that out and let them uh, feel it surrounding them in whatever ways we can. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Please remember that we're taking our offering um, online. Uh, you can find a way to do it on the website, uh, on the welcome page of the website, or you can send contributions into the church. Um, in the sanctuary, you can place your offering, in the, uh, your general offering in one of the baskets in the back, and your offering uh, for uh, church, uh, no, for World Central Kitchen uh, in the other basket. Um, Jesus came to the disciples, gave them peace and the Holy Spirit, and sent them out to be what Paul called the body of Christ in the world, continuing his work. Um, and part of how we do that is as individuals, uh, but the most powerful part of being the body of Christ is what we do together in the work of the church. Um, so let us make our offering in that spirit of, of being sent by Jesus out to do acts of healing and justice and love in the world. Um, and let us remember that however and whenever and whatever we give. Um, now please stand if you are able for the benediction. And the benediction is from the book of Romans written by a man who was in prison, I think, more often than he was out. Um, a real, you know, he had a Nelson Mandela experience, floggings and just all kinds of persecution. And he says, what then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. So go, blessed by that faith and that strength and that peace. Amen. Please be seated in the service in a spirit of prayer as we listen to the postlude. 